Hi, everyone. We are uh, Link Architecture. And we, first of all, we would like to thank Graphisoft for inviting us to this KCC conference. It's very nice to be uh, seen and get the opportunity to present our company here at KCC. As a company, Link is one of the leading architectural companies in Scandinavia. We are one company in the Scandinavian market, and our vision is to crea create room for better lives. My name is Björn Erik Lee. And My name is Dink Sunison. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. You're going a bit through a bit, hmm? uh, yeah. too fast. Yeah. Should we pres present ourselves? <laughs> yeah, I said my name, so it's. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to say more? No? Okay. That's enough? Okay. Yeah? You can, you can read the rest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> As I said, we are Link Architecture, and we have uh, quite a few sectors that we are involved in. Mainly, we work in healthcare, education, and residential uh, buildings. And if you take a look at our strategy, we have a new strategy in place, and it's divided into six main goals. We have one link throughout Scandinavia. We have a number of we're going to be number one in the market when it comes to healthcare and urbanism. We should be extending market shares, and we should get architectural design in the first division, pre Premier League in the Scandinavian market. And last but not least, a leading position in digitalization. So how should we do that? We are going to build one Scandinavian platform in IT. We will see IT as a service. We will work at one company in one open BIM platform, and we need to have some important things in place. The main thing is seeing IT as a service. We have an IT service that acts as a real partner. We centralize servers in large data centers. We utilize license pools, and we do a lot of things just to make an IT platform work across the Scandinavian market. When it comes to ARCHICAD, we have established one beam cloud in the Scandinavia. We have one licensing pool. We have common work environments. And we are focusing on partners to add more add-ons and further extend the use of ARCHICAD and the platform itself. So when it comes to ARCHICAD, yeah. We have a long history of ARCHICAD. We have the, been or is the largest users of ARCHICAD in the Scandinavian market. Back in 2000, I was a guy that convinced the company that we should move over to ARCHICAD from AutoCAD 2D to 3D in the everyday production. When we started, we started in 2000, changing to ARCHICAD 6.5, and in 2001, we started to streamline and standardize uh, the focus on 3D and how we work throughout our projects. In 2005, we, uh, BIM was put on the agenda, and the internal expert groups was uh, set in place. If you look at 2013, the ex we extended the expert group throughout Scandinavia. And 2016, we expanded even more on BIM focus and got a new strategy in place to be the uh, lead, uh, leader in digitalization in the Scandinavian market. In 2017, we actually went from one platform and to a platform independent company. So if you took a small look at our projects before Stan will get the word. Sorry. We work in hospitals and healthcare, as I told er earlier. Hospital design 
is a prioritized market to link. Few hospitals are as challenging and designing and planning as a hospital. And now some of our, our projects. This is the Scandium Clinic, the new proton center up in uh, Sweden. This is Drammen Hospital, a big hospital down in Drammen, a, a city south of Oslo. This is Oldborg in Denmark. This is Söder Hospital, a big rebuild in Stockholm. And this is the Tönsberg project that Stan will talk a little bit more about. Okay, thank you. I think we go a little back. Um, I'm the leader of the, uh, this project, uh, of the team, working with digital collaboration. That includes BIM, but also how we work with information around. It's very BIM-centric. Oh, should I be placed one place? Okay. Um, and um, I think one of the reasons why we was asked uh, to do this is it's, uh, it's one of the first IBD projects. So I'm, uh, my focus here in my presentation is uh, very much lean and also the common data environment, how we actually are working. It's going to be pretty nerdy, uh, I have to warn you. Um, one of the reasons why we don't have a very flashy presentation, uh, a photo, uh, realistic uh, rendering here is because we're very uh, to the point. We don't uh, spend our resources on uh, renderings. This is actually just a screenshot from uh, uh, a live uh, model that is constantly uh, developed. Um, it won the um, Design Award, Feeling Smart uh, International Design Award uh, in 2017, half a year ago. Um, uh, mainly based upon a number of solutions that especially the client insisted on and that we are developing, and uh, I'm going to talk about those. So um, the project objectives of this uh, project is quite uh, challenging. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but you will see something highlighted in red, if you can see that. It has to be 10% um, lower, uh, reduced cost according to a reference project that was uh, finalized uh, before this one within from the same owner. At the same time, we need to reduce time on all constructions above, above ground level with 50%. Um, so it has to be built much faster. Of course, we need to uh, be very well planned and also uh, use prefab con uh, construction um, into um, a larger extent than we used to. Uh, at the same time, uh, we need to deliver the same quality as expected in other uh, hospitals, and we need to have complete deals of handover for the client they can use for facility management and operation. Um, and if any of you are, have um, studied project management, I think the first course is that between quality, cost, and time, you have to pick two. We choose all three just to challenge ourselves. The reason why we are so busy is uh, because of the site. Uh, we first have to uh, actually uh, clear the site, then we have to build the first stage, which is a psychiatry on uh, about 12,000 square meters. And when we have done that, we can move the people from the old psychiatry over here and demolish that. And only then we can build the large building, which we're, that's the stage we're actually approaching now. So that's why we're in a hurry and, 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 and doing it. Uh, this way. So how do we work? Uh, integ integrated project delivery, some of you may know it. I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with the, with the, uh, with the terms and also how we work with the lean design and construction, but uh, I'm going to go through this. Um, the ideas behind integrated project delivery is that you take a lot of different companies and instead of giving them different objectives, you have to do this, you have to do that, and everybody's optimizing their delivery and not really caring about the interface with the others. Um, then we actually are organized as one organization. It really means one contract. It means that we need to have full mutual trust. Uh, we don't, can't fight each other because if somebody else Let's say I'm a, as an architect and represent the architect or the design team. The, if the contractor is, uh, have low performance, uh, it will actually uh, also affect uh, my company in the end because we share profit and risk together. Um, a bit about how we are organized. This is actually how we work in the daily work. Three partners, uh, Turnspare Projected, that's actually the client. 
uh, sorry, there is no uh, English word for that. Tunsberg is uh, a town outside of Oslo. Uh, Kyrda is the design team. Skanska, probably you know, is uh, the main contractor. And then we have the three main technical contractors. They are also uh, associated with this deal. But then we have some jokers here. Uh, we have a lot of subcontractors out here. And they're actually not within this project. And actually, this really demonstrates, I'm going to tell you later, this really demonstrates the strengths of IPD, but also actually some of the weaknesses if you don't do it 100%. So one of the things that we thought about uh, doing the IPD was that we can actually uh, work much better if we include and engage contractor and main subcontractors in early state. We will actually have uh, much shorter life cycle both in in uh, in the uh, in the in the design process and also uh, shorter construction time uh, because we can have a targeted design and targeted production uh, so we will actually in comparison to more classical design bit build and turnkey projects uh, different kinds of, of contracts that are very popular around the world um, then we actually pool everybody together to make sure that we have the right uh, concepts uh, from the beginning, and we can focus on that and develop those without rework. And that's actually the basic idea here. So we have a shorter design construction life cycle, and that's, we really need that in order to achieve our goals. So um, then we have some uh, lean principles, target value design, integrated concurrent engineering, and last planner system. I'm going a bit through. I'm going to explain um, overall what, what it is. And everything is in a framework of open BIM. The open BIM is the carrier, the main carrier of all information, not just about the building information, but now actually also the pr process information, uh, decisions and so on. So to improve quality, to get good communication, and to secure that the information, whether it's the design or construction, tender and whatever, is actually being useful uh, also in facility management in the the project's entire life cycle. So that's part of the digital handover, not just a BIM, but a BIM with all the product information as well linked to the BIM. The target value design, the idea here is that uh, very basically, uh, you can expand on that, but I'm not going to here. It's a, it's a complete conference on its own. Uh, but the, the idea is that if you uh, engage the contractors and subcontractors and early stage, you can actually get, uh, you can operate and design and choose your concepts uh, with real prices. Um, in traditional projects, when you are making a lot of design, when you come to a point, you cannot change everything. So you get your prices from your subcontractor in traditional project later on, your only option is, if the price is too high, to lower quality. What we do now is, if you find out that we cannot do this, well, then we have to get innovative and, make, and, and do it some, some, somewhere else. And we, we do it in the early stage. So before everything else is settled, and we still have time to, to correct it. At a, at a stage we did, actually we, we, ha we had a cost estimation, a uh, very thorough uh, process in the very beginning of, 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 the, uh, of the project, and we, 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 there were several hundred million kroners uh, um, ahead. Um, you can divide that by 10 to get euros. Um, and, uh, and actually within a few months, we managed to pull it off without reducing uh, the, the square meters or the functionality or even the quality of, let's say, materials and equipment. So we could only have done that in, in such an integrated one contract. Everybody support each other. Um, another thing, another positive thing of uh, working uh, together from the beginning is that uh, you can agree with the subcontractors who are actually doing the building. The main contractor uh, is just managing. Uh, the subcontractors doing the building, you can actually agree with them uh, all, the, um, all the, the background, the information they need to make the actual construction on site. Um, actually, we found that, that some of the contractors from Europe, not just Norway, from Europe, they, they actually just use a, a, a concept uh, BIM from the design team, and then they moved on to make a more detailed construction BIM themselves. And, they, and that's, that actually, they became part of the design team. On the other hand, we saw that some other contractors, they came in later, and they were not acquainted with using BIM. Actually, they, they couldn't deliver BIM, but they could not use it either. For, so we had to make drawings. Uh, this is a drawingless uh, project. 
within IPD, you don't see a drawing. The first drawing we made was when we had to apply for the permission from the local authorities. Then we had to make drawings. We actually had to change our project director uh, in, in the, from, from the design outline to the detailed process. And the first thing he was like, well, the drawings. I said, what drawings? We don't have it. But now we do because of some of the subcontractors. They're simply not up to speed. So we, so we have to adapt to the real world, but we know how to. It actually it is manageable to do it without drawings. Um, another, thing, another thing is uh, we're not doing anything. We're not, nothing is allowed to be um, constructed uh, if it's not fully coordinated. And I think class detection is one of, it's a no-brainer when you use BIM. Everybody's acquainted with it. Um, but uh, we have a quite rigorous system. And now it also includes all those subcontractors who are making their own BIM. They have to actually be part of that. And this rigorous system is that everybody up here, that's the first step, all these small boxes. They have to make sure themselves that they're doing it correctly, coordinate with the other, deliver according to the uh, product standard, which I have developed. Um, and, um, and then it can get all the objects within that control area can then get a PS, it's a status. It actually a status, a property you put on the BIM. And then you apply for a multidisciplinary um, uh, control. It's done. Any deviations, of course, has to be corrected. And when it's perfect, everything is in order, all the uh, information is where it should be. Um, you send it for a client uh, audition of, of it, and only then you can start the control. That's a very rigorous process. I thought actually this would be uh, how every, every project uh, was done, but it's not. But actually this is how it should be done, and everything has to be documented here. We use ICE meetings. Um, you know ICE meetings, interconcurrent uh, engineering. Um, it's not those uh, s small business uh, issues uh, between two uh, disciplines or with within one discipline. But if you have complex interdisciplinary issues, uh, it's a very good idea to have meetings uh, where you have um, all those, all the decisions makers on the right level to make the decisions in one room. So everybody had their say in that room, and then we make a decision, and we will walk out. That, that, that decision is solid. You don't walk away from it. Um, it takes a long time to, to prepare such meetings. It doesn't really look like other meetings. They have a facilitator as well. Uh, you have to be tough, you have to drive people, you have to be on time, and so on. If one decision maker is not coming, you cancel the meeting, because you're wasting your time. Otherwise, they can come up uh, back uh, later and say, I wasn't hurt, I disagree with this, and then it's rework. A lot of information, uh, we actually base all our work on decisions. If decisions are remade, we have to rework. It's too much of a risk, takes time, costs too much, so we don't do it. And um, the outcome of this is that we get a very transparent decision process. There's no corridor people speaking to it. Everybody hear what is being said. And, and being relevant, and nobody is overruled. Um, it's very efficient. We don't, we don't uh, handle that many issues in one meeting, but when that issue is handled, you don't handle it 10 times over the next 10 meetings. It's settled, and you don't have to bear the risk of rework because of, of decisions are made again. And then uh, we do use a last planner system, which is very, uh, very, uh, very much used by contractors. Uh, and uh, it's a very engaging way. We use it in design as well. We, we have the entire, entire process from the outline design, detail design, product tendering, and, and production, handover. Everything is planned according to this, seamlessly between uh, design team and uh, contractors. Um, and it's actually quite manual. I think it's one of the few things that's manual because it's so low threshold, and it's a very good user interface post-it notes. Uh, we have tried to experiment with a digital subversion, but the user interface is not really engaged enough. But uh, this has another advantage. It, this gets the, uh, uh, the, the planning and the task to, this, to the building site, because the subcontractor, they cannot come into to, to the building uh, we have. We have a design building right next to the building site, uh, the, uh, a project building that is actually constructed for that only purpose. Uh, with very good facilities, as you can see here. It's the long, longest hol uh, huddle wall in the world. Ooh. 
Um, so we can make all the drawings on, blah, blah, blah. So now that was a nerdy part. Now it comes the super nerdy part. Um, common data environment, how do, how do we then set up the, 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 the data environment in order for that? First thing is that we don't really use our laptop. We use our laptops, but it's not using the processor. We just lock onto uh, a VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure. Uh, it's a server park somewhere else in, in Norway, and they are actually handling uh, centrally, all the uh, licenses and so on. So we actually physically had to have our graphics of license key and give to them as many we needed um, uh, in order to, to do this. There, are, uh, it means that the uh, the client actually can control uh, the technical user interface versions, which uh, uh, software are allowed, and so on completely. And um, it. Um, Actually, uh, this is why I call it super nerdy. Uh, actually, if, because everything works within the same environment, we can, uh, we can export and import, of course, uh, from Archicad, Revit. Uh, can I say that? Um, we use IFC, and we have a common repository. Um, and and uh, again, model checker, uh, use model checker, and um, we check that, uh, making reports, uh, report issues, uh, directly into the software using uh, BIM Colab that is outside its uh, proprietary. Um, and, and actually, because everything is, you don't have to upload things and so on. You still, you still have to have the process of exporting and importing. And I really urge uh, those soft vendors here behind these products to, to automate this. We really need that because we tend to spend too much time on it. We, we are I importing, exporting daily and even more on demand. For example, in ICE meetings, we have tracked, uh, in ICE meeting, we have tracked that we needed to, to make some changes with some walls and, and some, some ducts and so on to see how that would work because it was too complex to, to just carry on without knowing it. And the, the model was updated and we got a new uh, up, uh, update in, in Solibri after seven minutes. So that's, that's one of the positive things that we can, we can have uh, when everything is within actually the same server. Uh, so, if you stay on, on the Jotna BIM server, the BIM server is an IFC server, if you stick on that, because it's not just for uh, storing the model. This, this one, one f functionality it has here is because what we do here when we export the, the IFC file, everything has the same name, model name, and then it's actually uh, overwritten by the new version. But this one keeps the history of all the IFC file, but it has many other uh, 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 functions and three functions that we have actually built and we are building at the moment in order to support the processes, the uh, registering and, and documentation uh, during the project. Uh, project. We, but it, everything is within the BIM server and the BIM server structure is IFC. So this is easy. Um, and the first one is, is a manager who's handling of of all the issues that we're doing, we don't uh, work with with uh, with a document like Word uh, 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 Word documents, uh, ag agendas, and minutes meetings. Then we can register uh, all deviation uh, damages on building side, but later on also during facility and management. And we can also register uh, all the system and product information. Uh, so we have all the product information. Could be PDFs. Could be uh, more expanded uh, BIM objects, uh, but too too heavy to they will weigh down the the uh, the model, and we can actually uh, link it to, um, uh, to to the same um, uh, within the same system. This is how uh, this issue manager looks like. It's a database. Uh, you have a list of the different arenas. Uh, we're not sharing everything with everybody. I mean, we are now, to together with the contractors and subcontractors, we are now more than 100 people, uh, 150 people, uh, just for the, uh, on the manager uh, side and, and, and design uh, side. So we have many different uh, groups, uh, decision groups. And of course, there are titles for uh, uh, each subject and a description. Uh, there is a status, uh, a priority, a due date, because somebody, it has to be done. Uh, and somebody has to do it, so there is also responsibility. It's quite simple. It looks like uh, GitHub or something like that. One of the advantages of doing that is, for example, uh, 
Of course, that issues are never forgotten. You will always be reminded of what's not solved. Uh, you don't have to, a Word document will never report it to you, but this will. Another thing is that you can, on higher project level, you can actually uh, monitor the performance of the different arenas. Are you following up, or are, will the gap between uh, open issues and uh, closed issues is that getting too uh, too large, for example? And then you have to take a discussion: How can we improve that? Um, one of the reasons why we have actually not used GitHub, but actually used uh, the BIM server and, and build it here, is we can also base, uh, base it on BCF, for example, uh, issues that are coming from the BIM. Uh, so you can have it documented here and actually get it linked uh, uh, back within. Unfortunately, we don't have the plugin as BIM Colab uh, has. So we don't, if we had that, that uh, Solibri uh, plugin with, with um, Archicad and the other, uh, application, uh, then we would actually may probably use this uh, totally for communicating all the issues, but we don't have this. So this is just an example of an issue, a dry cooler standing too close to the edge of, of the facade, so you can see it uh, from, from the ground. So, um, and But still, as I said, we're not using Word documents, but pe people actually use this, so we also, we're building, we built um, a user interface uh, for, for this, uh, so it looks a bit more familiar, so you can go into a meeting, you can group, say this issue, this issue, this issue, and this issue, uh, group it into one meeting, uh, and then you have a list of here just one, you can have several down here, but it's the same information, it's part of the same database, it's just another way of showing it. Um, so. Another tool uh, that, we have, uh, that we have done uh, is for register things on site and also afterwards when the building is done and the follow-up and maintenance um, uh, has to be done. And what you can do here is a 2D inter interface but from the server, so you see a plan, but you can, uh, you can point on objects and so on. So what you can do here is find, uh, for example, a wall and uh, take a picture of that wall before it's closed so you can see all the studs and all the wiring and piping and just get a picture of it, then it's closed. And, but it's linked to that wall. So during maintenance, I can go in, in my BIM server, click on that wall, see there is photo documentation, take up that photo directly, and see, ah, there's a lot of wiring and piping here. Uh, I, maybe I should be careful, or at least I know I have to call an electrician and a plumber in order to do something here. Um, and then, then you have the last uh, attachment to here, which is the, uh, the uh, system and product registry. Uh, we need to go from the design BIM, but also to make sure that the one thing is that the design has to be uh, correct according to uh, all the deviation and errors on building site. Usually people are not really doing that, um, but we have to do that. But then also all subcontractors delivering products, they actually have to call in that now this product has been used in the product. And they're doing it using another Norwegian system delivering uh, actually information about all products that's available on the Norwegian market. Um, and it can be uh, uh, in many different forms, but it's going into a system product register. And then, of course, there will be uh, a job to model, uh, to link it to the objects. But still, st since we're working with classification, it's not one by one, so it's, it will be quite efficient. And uh, as you see here, the first one is the BIM in itself, the representation, geometrical representation of the, of, of the building. Then you can have some objects that have more information, but you don't have them in the BIM because they weigh down the, uh, the BIM too much. And then you have a document database, PDFs, uh, warranties, other agreements, manuals, and so on, and the photos that we saw from the register tool uh, that we can also put in here. So it will manage all these kind of things, and it will be BIM-centric. So you can go on site and actually uh, find all the information you need, and you can actually make a work order on site. So I think we, we, we think that we'll, it will give a much smarter way of, of working. Um, we have played a little with, with the term uh, that we should not uh, work harder but work smarter. Uh, but actually, it is a hard work to work smart. Uh, so to get this leading position in digitalization, as uh, Bjorn Erik uh, talked about, uh, we, we need to do a lot of efforts. Another thing that we're doing uh, right now, and we are um, investigating, is that not the Turnspare project, is another thing I want to show you. Um, Link has uh, uh, own um, a sector 
is called urbanism, that is a very early stage in urban projects to assess this urban situation. And uh, some of those uh, situations can be very complex, geometrically uh, complex. Uh, for example, to, uh, to, to see how people are, uh, the people, flow of people, pedestrians, uh, cyclists, and so on. Um, uh, where, is, where, where do the curbs need to be broader? And also, are there dead pockets where uh, women may not feel safe, for example, because no one passes by, uh, this is where they can be raped. Sorry, it's, it's a fact we have to plan according to. Um, so, so those are some things that we're actually scripting right now. Another thing is that we're looking into, I know that when we're talking about parametric design, usually it's about cool stuff. Um, to quote a uh, very famous uh, French-American designer, Raymond Louis, he said the most sexy curve of design is the profit curve. And, and if we actually look at some of the, some of the uh, processes that takes enormous amount of time, for example, in a project as the next one here, the uh, project here is a hospital, 120,000 square meters. I also have a leading position here. And, and that's a lot of rooms. And if we can just jump back here, uh, I'm, I'm going to it, I'm uh, going to explain it. If we're going to have a daylight analysis uh, and also facade design based on that daylight analysis, so every room will get uh, the daylight they, they should have, and we can minimize uh, the uh, artificial lighting. Um, uh, that's one thing, but also have something as uh, stupid as inter, inter walls, suspended ceilings, um, and in the detailed design, suspended ceilings, we can also actually have the, the grid of the panels and uh, see what's the optimal uh, position of putting uh, uh, lighting and uh, sprinkling, sprinklers, uh, fire suppression system, and so on. And also to be able to work with object naming and classification. Stuff that architect hates, it takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money. If we can automate this, it's a win-win. We are making more compatible. Our architects can focus on their, what they're really good at, making good architecture, instead of actually becoming modeling robots. Um, and actually, the workflow here, I think, is quite interesting. We use the Rufus uh, to register all the requirements for, uh, for, 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 for rooms, uh, zones. And, um, and we can use that information, take those parts that we need, and refer it, transfer it into Archicad, and then uh, Grasshopper can read that. And according to that information, for example, this type of room needs this type of ceiling. This type of room, in general, will need this type of uh, acoustic rating, for example. So it will handpick an object from a list, predefined list, uh, with minimum that uh, acoustical uh, requirement uh, from, from that. And that object will be also pre-classified and pre-named. So it will be correct when the contractor are going to make a cost analysis of it. So that is what we think of workflow. So the last about link architecture. I'm, I'm, I'm very close now. Uh, we actually have two platforms. Uh, we have both Revit and, and Archicad for buildings, uh, mainly Archicad in, in Sweden and, and Norway, and mainly uh, uh, Revit in Denmark. And we have no plans of changing that. We think it's a strength for us to, uh, to utilize the, uh, the competence that we have built over many years, that we're experts on both platforms. Um, and, uh, and we actually say we use the best tool that also include other kinds of tools. Um, as long as it fits into a life cycle uh, perspective. And that's where the Open BIM comes in. So we are not a Revit or an Archicad office, we're an Open BIM office. Um, we want to exchange and collaborate based on open standards. And for the building part, it's IFC. Uh, for, for landscaping uh, and, and, and planning, it's, uh, it's a GML uh, mainly, or some XML, land XML as, as well. And also at the moment, we are actually are making a, a standard, internal standard, on uh, to, to standardize all our uh, deliveries in Scandinavia on the level that we can standardize uh, on uh, Scandinavian level and on national level to make sure that it's easier for people to move from office to office so we can use their competence where it's needed uh, so we have no boundaries. Together with what Bjorn Eric said about the, we have an open IT, ICT uh, infrastructure where it's also possible to move around. So it doesn't come by itself. Uh, this is just an example. This is the BIM 
digitalization organization from the top executive to the national responsible to actually those who are responsible on the different teams, uh, the offices, and we have an additional one for the, for the ICT working together here. So, um, final one. Um, graphics or products are important for us for maintaining our goal to be become an open BIM uh, office. Graphisoft as a company are important for us uh, because you really uh, listen to our problems, you take us serious, and you develop your products uh, according to what you hear from us and your other key clients, and we really appreciate that. Um, and I think we have very interesting times ahead of us, and we really look forward to expand this cooperation. So uh, once again, thank you for having us and for this uh, great conference.